There could be many debates whether EVs are actually better for the environment or not, but there is absolutely no doubt on the phenomenal growth that EVs have witnessed in recent years. In the year 2023 alone, 10.64 million electric vehicles were sold across the globe. And this is not a one-off event. In fact, the global EV market is expected to keep on growing at a phenomenal rate of 10% per year for at least the upcoming 10 years. Theoretically, this kind of market opportunity should attract competition from all sides. But in reality, there seems to be just one nation that has been dominating the global EV race. You guessed it right. We are talking about China. Is this Chinese domination shocking? Absolutely yes. But is this unexpected? Absolutely not. Why are we saying this? Just have a look at these stats. In the year 2022, China accounted for 63% of the entire global electric vehicle sales. This means that three of every five EVs sold across the globe were sold in China. If we talk specifically about battery electric vehicles, BEV, then China's dominance is even greater. Up till 2022, China held a gigantic 79% share of the global BEV market. Contrast this with Europe and the US that have a mere 11% and 7% share respectively. But what's even more interesting is to find out how China managed to achieve such phenomenal dominance. And more importantly, what can we learn from China and its EV journey? Our journey takes us back in time to the year 2009. At that time, internal combustion engines, or ICE vehicles as we call them, used to rule the market. Chinese automakers made multiple attempts to compete with Japanese, German, and Korean car brands, but never succeeded. At the same, the EV market was in its nascence and was being looked at with huge skepticism. The only relevant EV maker of the time, Tesla, was still struggling to find its place on the world stage. But none of this was bothering China at all. In fact, China was viewing EV as a golden opportunity to not only re-enter, but also claim dominance in the already lost global auto race. And so, the country began preparing a multi-decadal strategy to become a global leader in the EV space. The first step that China took was the launch of the 10 Cities, Thousand Vehicles Initiative. China selected 10 cities as pilot locations to implement and test various policies and measures to support EV development. The 10 cities chosen for the initiative included major urban centers such as Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, and Hangzhou, among others. These cities were strategically selected to represent a diverse range of geographical, economic, and demographic characteristics. The biggest challenge in front of the Chinese government was to resolve the chicken and egg problem. Without a substantial amount of charging stations, people do not buy EVs, and without a substantial amount of EVs on the road, the automakers do not install charging stations. To resolve this, the Chinese government focused on building the charging infra first. But to avoid automakers incur any financial loss, the government also offered huge subsidies and financial support. Financial incentives and subsidies were also provided to the consumers and manufacturers to promote the production and purchase of EVs. It was necessary to launch this initiative in the form of a pilot because it helped build initial confidence among consumers, manufacturers, and investors. This confidence was the major driving force behind the subsequent rapid growth of the EV industry in China. Launching this program at a pilot stage also helped the government to understand the challenges and opportunities associated with the widespread adoption of EVs. These lessons were crucial for refining national policies and strategies. The success in developing charging infrastructure in the pilot cities laid the groundwork for the national expansion of charging networks. The success of the 10 cities, Thousand Vehicles Initiative also helped the Chinese EV makers in gaining global competitiveness and technological edge over their international counterparts. Looking at the success of the program in 2012, the government rolled out a similar initiative at the national level and dubbed it as the New Energy Vehicle Development Plan. 
The plan sets specific targets for the production and sales of new energy vehicles, NNEVs. These targets aimed to ensure that NEVs would become a substantial portion of the total vehicle fleet eight years down the line, meaning by the year 2020. The plan also focused on building an entire ecosystem for and around EVs. This included providing massive grants and subsidies to firms who invested in the R&D of battery technology, electric drivetrains, and energy management systems. This plan not only ensured the long-term sustainability of the EV sector within China, but also greatly reduced China's dependency on foreign technology to develop its EV ecosystem. To promote the manufacturing and sales of plug-in hybrid vehicles, PHEVs, the government introduced regulatory measures, including emission standards, limits on vehicle fuel consumption, and preferential treatment for NEVs in certain urban areas. But the biggest highlight of the plan was the construction of a robust charging infra at a national scale. This greatly reduced the problem of range anxiety among potential EV buyers. And soon enough, EV brands such as BYD and NIO started emerging. These companies not only captured the domestic Chinese market, but also started making successful inroads across the globe. This brings us to the next and the last question that remains to be answered. How did these Chinese EV makers become so successful in their international ventures? Let's find an answer to this. Once the Chinese government gets satisfied with the performance of its EV brands in the domestic market, only then the government starts to support the foreign expansion plans of such companies. The government encouraged such outbound investments by providing financial incentives, policy guidance, and diplomatic efforts. We should also keep in mind that these Chinese EV companies were not simply expanding into any geography that they possibly can. Instead, they were strategically targeting to enter only in key markets, both developing and developed. They only targeted regions with supportive regulatory environments, growing demand for electric vehicles, and an existing infra for EV adoption. It is worth mentioning BYD's success at this point. No other brand has captured global attention as much as BYD. The company has been particularly successful in markets like Europe, with its electric buses gaining traction in countries like the UK and Scandinavia. Another dominating player that has emerged from China is NIO. While NIO has a presence in multiple countries, its success in the European market is special. It officially entered Norway, one of the biggest EV markets in Europe, in 2021, and soon became a force to reckon with. Other prominent global Chinese EV companies include Xpeng Motors and Geely. Geely specifically has been very strategic in its approach. In 2017, Geely announced a partnership with Volvo and launched a new EV brand, Polestar, primarily created to target high-performance electric car customers. As we near the end of our video, it now has become clear to us that the phenomenal dominance of Chinese EV makers is not mere coincidence, and neither is it a result of one or two schemes launched by the government. In fact, it is actually an after-effect of a well-thought-out strategy, combined with a series of incremental reforms and undeterred discipline to make things possible. Thank you for joining us on this eye-opening journey. For more riveting insights on global dynamics, don't miss our other compelling videos. Click the links on your screen and subscribe for more thought-provoking content.